Hey guys, welcome back to the Beetle Shelf. Today we got something a bit different set up today. Um, I don't normally pin insects um, because I like to see them alive with the little soles, but today I uh, got gifted these nice beetles, um, these nice specimens from my friend who was on a hike uh, in southern Utah. So we're going to uh, show them off and pin them today. So the specimens we have here are a male-female pair of Xylorictes thestalis. It's a rhino beetle. Look how beautiful the horn is. It's a very nice specimen. Uh, here's the female. The female's a little bit larger. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll measure them really fast. So, move the female out of the way here. So the male, these calipers you can just buy on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. If you just get plastic ones, you're fine. This male is about 31 millimeters. Uh, these things can range anywhere from um, 25 to 36 millimeters. So he's average, right in the middle. Um, let's just move him over. Maybe check out our female. Come on, gotta pick up our focus again. There we go. Okay. And you always measure rhinoceros beetles from the um, top of their head, the very point of their head, to the back of their elytra. So, this female is 30. Four, 35 millimeters, so pretty big uh, for a female. Really cool specimen. So um, I don't pin too often, um, but we'll kind of walk through some um, do's and don'ts of pinning. And um, yeah, I usually only pin insects that I've kept myself and raised myself, and I keep them as a memento of sorts. Um, but today we have this really special gift from my good friend. Um, so yeah, you pick these up down in, um, Southern Utah. So, okay. Um, I'll show off a pair of Lucanus Mazama that I pinned. Um, that's kind of the position we're going for. Something like that. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and, uh, get started. The first pin you place on beetles is on the top right corner of their um, elytra right here. So I have the pin right there. You can see the little black dot. The pin goes through right there. You get it as close to 90 degrees as you can through the beetle. Make sure it goes pretty straight through it. Um, mine's not super straight because I'm still learning how to um, do effective pinning. Beetles are hard because the elytra casing is very difficult to go through uh, on your first needle. So. But after you have him kind of uh, laid out there, let's put his front arms out first. So I take a pin, I'll kind of drag out just the front arm, put it right there. You don't put any pins through the bug um, except for the first pin that goes through the top right of the uh, elytra. All other pins just hold things in place. So um, you might be thinking, well, most of the beetles and stuff that I see um, sorry, blocking it for a sec. Most of the beetles and stuff that I see uh, when I go out collecting are hardened and stiff. Why is yours um, so malleable? The reason is my friend kept it in a nice uh, plastic bottle that kept the humidity high over a few days. Um, if you find a dried specimen that's already kind of stiff, I recommend um, using a Tupperware with um, some hot hot water uh, on a paper towel that then can uh, fill the container with steam and let the uh, the specimen get really soft. If you're um, wanting to pin a specimen that you have already kept that is alive, the most humane way to kill an insect is by freezing it. So put it in a small container and freeze it, um, and then the next day it'll be ready. You can leave it in there as long as you want. Uh, when you pull it out, give it an hour or two to kind of thaw out, and then for the next few days, it'll be pretty malleable, so you can go through and pin it. 
So, okay. We'll put his leg down like that. These beetles are really nice because they have a really beautiful horn. Um, like I said, their scientific name is Silorictes um, thestalis. They're often just called a uh, Xylorictes rhinoceros beetle. Um, and again, I'm not going, th I'm not piercing anything. I'm just moving his, uh, his tibia, his little arms here into a position that I think uh, looks nice. And you know, people have different opinions on what looks good in pinning. Uh, the museums often will take specimens like I showed you before that are very bland, but I have seen other people um, take a, like a wooden log and position the beetle very lifelike. Um, and I think that's nice. I like that. It's kind of respectful to the animal. Um, it's really nice because it, it shows it, you know, what the beetle would be like if it was alive. And uh, I really like that. I like to kind of keep as much life in uh, the animal as I can. So, I'm gonna have to grab more pins here soon. The pins I just purchased off of Amazon. Um, you can get them rather cheap for a big, this, set, this is a, probably a set of a hundred or so. Uh, and like I said, only one pin is ever really used uh, permanently per insect because um, you only have to put one th pin through the insect the rest of it is um, let's get our focus back the rest of it is just um, holding the insect in place so What I usually do is I'll put probably three pins on every leg, um, depending on how how uh, easily it's it's coming together. Uh, one to hold. Let me show you on the female. One to hold this section of the leg in place. Another to hold this longer section, and the one to hold the tarsi, the very claws. So one pin holding each section in place. This beetle is very wide, so it's harder to get this. Um, the section on the, the thicker part of the leg because it's usually mostly underneath the beetle. Um, so with here, just uh, two pins might be sufficient for most legs. So, okay. So yeah, you can see how it's coming along so far. Um, drying, after you pin it, you let it dry and drying can just sit out in your house for um, two weeks, these Leconis Mizama I have drying have been probably drying for two or plus two or more weeks. Um, so, um, yeah, sometimes it can take a while to dry, but that's okay. Notice he's missing some tarsi on this left, left side. He's not super straight. Let's kind of straighten him out a little bit. Just do his uh, front legs maybe a little bit. There we go. They're not, they're just not to move. So in this case where the leg's not going where I want it to, I'm gonna kinda pin the head in a specific position and then move the legs where I want it to. Okay, get more pins out. I, uh, you're able to pin with maybe some little map pins or whatnot um, 
if you're really on a budget, but I highly recommend getting these nice insect pins. Uh, very worth it, very easy to use, and they're very sharp and they go through even uh, this hard insect like we see here. Okay. So you can be very meticulous with this. Um, I'm not going to be too detailed. Um, just for a personal co collection, they're not anything that I'm going to be sending to a, uh, a museum or whatnot. So the quality is not as uh, important. But angle is hard to get here. Oftentimes the tar seal gets stuck. Here we go. The front legs I had to get in and go and actually um, kind of get them moving a little bit um, for the specimen to move the way I wanted it to. So we're going to move the head back a little bit. Check how our head looks if it's very flat. Just pinning that tarsi down. Again, I didn't go through it. Um, camera might be a little, a little skewed, um, but that's not uh, too awful of a pinning job. It's okay. So we'll straighten this tarsi out actually. Okay, um, so yeah, we'll take a look at this guy a little bit more. Very, um, very beautiful, very beautiful beetle. These beetles are very plentiful in um, Southwest United States, like Utah and Arizona. Um, and I would love to breed them, but they're very difficult to breed. The females often only lay eggs in a mixture of freshly ground rotten leaves and um, white rotted hardwood that has white mold growing on it. And um, as far as I know, the only person that has bred this species is Orrin McMonagall and he did it after 15 years of trying. So it's very difficult uh, to breed. Hopefully one day I can pioneer a better way to do it. Um, so we'll experiment, um, around with it, but, uh, yeah, there's our, uh, our rhinoceros beetle. Um, I'll be going down to, uh, Southern Utah over the next few days to collect some Grant's rhinoceros beetles, um, and then I'll have a video showcasing those, um, coming up. So... If you have any questions or concerns about your own beetles or how to get started, just give me a, uh, a quick email at, at beetleshelf at gmail.com or go to my website, www.beetleshelf.com. Uh, thanks for watching.